times. Again, it's this desperation. Washington is desperate, London is desperate, and the people in Kiev are desperate. Ukraine has lost this war. They've taken anywhere from 300,000 to 350,000 dead. These are dead Ukrainian soldiers. How many hundreds of thousands of wounded there are is anybody's guess. The point yeah. is that they're running out of equipment, running out of ammunition, and running out of manpower. Why do you think this war is taking so long? Um, I think many of us in the very beginning of this war back in February of 2022 thought this is just going to be several weeks um, and then it's going to be over. And yet here we are a year and a half later and it's still going. What do you think the reason is for that? I think there are two reasons. First of all, most of us thought that the Russians would go into Ukraine with a vengeance, that they would effectively destroy Ukrainian units in their barracks. They would pulverize anything they ran into, and they would try to rush through whatever lines they encountered to come to terms with close, close combat with the Ukrainians. The opposite was the case. Putin gave very strict guidance that there was to be little or no collateral damage. You are not supposed to shoot anyone unless you could identify them as a Ukrainian soldier. And he actually wanted to give as many Ukrainian soldiers as possible the opportunity to surrender. Well, the Ukrainians turned out to be very formidable. There were almost 400,000 of them that we had equipped and trained, and they decided to pull into towns and cities and effectively fortify themselves. This caused their ultimate annihilation because once you sit in a fortified place, you could be surrounded, isolated, starved, whatever, and eventually destroyed. So it, it didn't work, but it was something the, the Russians were not prepared for. They also decided when they couldn't find anyone who would negotiate. Some of your listeners will remember that in late March, Ukrainian uh, President Zelensky said that, well, I think we could probably live with neutrality, which was one of the key demands of the Russians. They just wanted a neutral state on their border, not a member of NATO. They didn't want to see U.S. missiles show up in eastern Ukraine that could threaten their own nuclear deterrent. Well, ultimately that failed because Boris Johnson flew in from London with instructions from Biden to make sure no agreement was reached. Mm -hmm. So suddenly the Russians are standing and saying, well, this is going to drag on now. We only have about 220,000 men in our army. We have about 134,000 draftees. This isn't going to work. So they went over to the defensive. They tried to occupy all the territory that was essentially Russian in terms of population, which they've done. Then they said, we, we can't continue this. We need more forces. So they went on to the defensive. They conducted this as an economy of force mission and let the Ukrainians essentially smash themselves to bits trying to de defeat the Russian defenses. That's why it's taken so long. Yeah, and the counteroffensive right now with Ukraine is not going well. In fact, um, Zelensky even said, he admitted this on Wednesday when he was talking to the BBC. He said that, um, the, the counteroffensive is slower than desired. And he said, some people believe this is a Hollywood movie and expect results, but it's not. Um, so they're not going very well. From their perspective, from the Ukrainian perspective, how much longer, I mean, even with these cluster munitions, how much longer can they go? What, or what would they need? I mean, are, are we talking like the next step is nukes? No, I hope not. Uh, and I don't think there's any evidence that the Russians would launch any nuclear weapons, uh, or for that matter, I don't see any evidence that we will. We both understand the consequences. There's no such thing as a small nuke. You know, you explode a tactical nuclear weapon, five kilotons or less, everybody's supposed to stand around and say, oh, well, don't worry about that. That's a small nuke. No, what <laughs> happens is that everybody says, we better use what we have before we lose it, and you get Armageddon. I don't see that happening. So no, that's not the answer. The second thing is, Ukrainians, as I said, are running out of ammunition, people, equipment. They're losing everything that we send to them faster than they can employ it effectively. And you can't, you can't build an army on the fly. You have to have an organization in place, an institution. Those things never existed. So the Ukrainians at this point will continue to try and demonstrate that there's life left in them. But the truth is, if the Russians attack, they'll be swept away. And they know that. They will die in a hail of incredible artillery fire, rocket fire, missile fire, and they'll be overrun by hundreds of thousands of Russian troops. So the question is, what happens in Vilnius at this meeting? Are we finally going to come to terms with reality? Will we negotiate an end to this, or do we force the Russians to do what they really don't want to do, which is attack? 
I mean, they'd, they'd like to end this war without a terrible bloodbath beyond what already exists. Okay, but you know the military industrial complex, the hawks, the warmongers, they've been saying there, there is no way we can let Russia win. And for first of all, you know, what is that even, what is Russia winning? So could they maybe spare themselves by spinning it and saying, okay, Russia can keep the land that they've already basically uh, taken at this point, and this somehow they can, uh, is there a way to spin that as a loss for Russia so that we can get out of this? Because I don't know how we're going to get out of this when they've been saying this whole time, Russia cannot win. We must ensure they lose. Look, uh, there are two realities here. <clears throat> One is that the European populations, even the Polish population, is opposed to direct war with Russia. So there's no appetite to go in there with large numbers of U.S. or European forces. Now, the Poles and Lithuanians are talking about trying to do something independent of NATO. That mm -hmm. won't work. The Russians will regard that as a NATO threat and they will be destroyed. So I, I hope I hope someone with a clear head puts an end to that nonsense. The second thing to keep in mind is most Americans don't care. They're not even watching. They've got their minds focused on all sorts of domestic problems. So the notion that if the president were to announce Ukrainians have given all they can, it is time to end this tragedy. There is no point in any further loss of life. I think most Americans would say, well, that's great. They don't yeah. care. It's the people in Washington that don't want to admit that they were wrong. All of their assumptions from the beginning were wrong. The goal of destroying Russia and forcing Putin out of office was ridiculous. It was silly. And we're now out of ammunition. And we don't have the forces to send in there. The Russians yeah. have 300,000 troops in reserve ready to attack. We have nothing like that.